shall the ransom come to behold the King of glory and they will sing hallelujah to his holy name have you come just to listen to music I tell you the truth this is how it's going to be when we all come together in that beautiful atmosphere and our King of glory will be seated and we will behold him we will shout Hosanna we will shout glory to his name listen to me you see the best they sing to the glory of the one who reigns forever you see the mountains look at the rivers all together they are shouting Hosanna to the one who lives forever amen I want to invite you everyone right here rise on your feet as everyone we will lift our voices together to shout hallelujah amen
Papa not the finish, you. But with Jumia, your enjoyment self not go finish. I'd like to leave you in the hands of this. Wonderful. I'd like to leave you in the hands of this wonderful group of persons to treat us for the next minute. And then we'll have our pastor who will be coming to do us the opening prayer. Please, I invite to do us glorious is the name by Love Ensemble. Thank you.
I've gone. 
God has done.
There's a time in your life when things are black and white, but in every moment, God understands. He is there in times of trouble. Something big is about to happen in the city of Port Harcourt. Oh yes, it's at Final Moments Bible Series. Join Pastor Dave M. Yekwere, PhD, Associate Professor of Church History, Clifford University, Nigeria, in his End Time Lecture Series. As he presents the great themes of the Bible in a clear, enthusiastic and compelling way that will leave you inspired and blessed. Date, October 16 to 29, 2022. Time, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. daily. Venue, Cassoni International Hotel by Presbyterian Close, Off Stadium Road, Patakot. Join us live on YouTube at Pentecost 2023 and Facebook at SD Church PHC and at SD Church Stadium Road. There will be downlink centers in all Seventh-day Adventist churches in Port Harcourt, Ikwere, Eche, Okrika, and Calabari. For more information, please call plus 234-806-229-1145 or plus 234-903-789-1680. As, As the Lord, Lord speaks, I will go. See you there. See you. Bye. 
words together. Pardon for sin and all your peace that ends your end. Time on the prince and suit into God. Strength for today. Something big is about to happen in the city of Port Harcourt. Oh yes, it's at Final Moments Bible Series. Join Pastor Dave M. Yekwere, PhD, Associate Professor of Church History, Clifford University, Nigeria, in his End Time Lecture Series. As he presents the great themes of the Bible in a clear, enthusiastic and compelling way, Oh, 
Something big is about to happen in the city of Port Harcourt. Oh yes, it's at Final Moments Bible Series. We want to thank ancient Chukwemeka for that beautiful song. The Lord is going to bless you and you are going to fly in Jesus' name. In our midst today, we have the Eden Choir of Rumokuta. They will take the stage and do wonderful songs for us. Please, Eden Choir, you are welcome as you take on the stage.
Something big is about to happen in the city of Port Harcourt. Oh yes, it's at Final Moments Bible Series. Join Pastor Dave M. Yekwere, PhD.
can agree with me that indeed it is a choir located Amen It is a choir may the Lord amplify your voices Oh I pray that your singing will not end here May you sing in heaven in Jesus name Friends of God it is another time that the Lord is ready and willing to bless each one of us again this evening and I want to believe you have had a nice day today. Quickly, as I drop the microphone, Pastor Israel Ono will come for the Bible reading and the opening and the prayer. Immediately after that, the song leaders will come up for the theme song. The next voice you are going to hear immediately after the theme song is that of the voice of Pastor Dr. Moni Dave Yekure, a seasoned preacher. This evening, the Lord will use him to anoint our heart again this evening. As you prepare to hear the word of God, may the Lord bless you real good in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening, friends like us to pick up our Bibles as we as we consider the book of Genesis chapter 2 I'm going to take from verse 18 to 23 Genesis chapter 2 from verse 18 to 23 23 I'm reading from the New King James Version. It said, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him a helper, comparable to him. 19. Out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bear of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he will call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. Twenty. So Adam gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a helper comparable to him. 
21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall on Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in his place. 22. Then the rib which the Lord God has taken from the man, he made into a woman. And he brought her to the man. 23 and the last. And Adam said, This is now the bone of my bones, and the flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. And Lord God, give us understanding to his word in Jesus' name. Our plea with us to be on our feet as we seek the presence of God in prayer. Merciful and gracious God, we thank you this evening for your grace and mercy upon us. We thank you, Lord, because you have made it possible for us to be among the living today. We thank you for the success of our activities today. Gracious Father, we say glory be to your name forevermore. Lord, we have converged again to listen to your word and instruction from above. Father, we plead that you open our ears and give us understanding as your son, your servant, we speak to our hearing. Heavenly Father, we pray that you hide him behind the cross. Remove self, pride, and let every word that will come from him be ordained from you. Lord, as we hear, as we listen, may blessings be ours. And Lord, in heaven, we pray at the end of today, our blessings will be our portion. And your name alone will be glorified. Do this for us and many more, we pray, with thanksgiving, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's rise for it, Simpson. We know not the hour of the master's appearing. The moment is nearing when he shall return. Tis a promise most sharing, but we know. Let us be seated. Everybody is welcome in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to thank the Eden Choir for featuring here tonight. We have another night and the program will be over the Sabbath morning. <clears throat> Those of you who are watching us at the Down Lake Centers, wherever you are, may the Lord bless you. <clears throat> may the Lord keep you. May the Lord grant you the desires of your heart. Tomorrow, the program is closing, and tomorrow, 
evening, I am going to discuss the D Day. I wish you had come here to sing that song tomorrow. It has to do with Jesus is coming. It's been wonderful standing here to talk to God's children all over the world. It's been wonderful. And uh, I thank God for the privilege. We've gotten a lot of responses. Now people are happy. Some of you have started fasting. Some are trying to do the 21 days Daniel fast. Like I said, you must do it. It's a must. Daniel fast. At least once in a year. Do Daniel fast and re-consecrate yourself. You will eat food, but not the choice food. Daniel didn't eat his choice food. Because you want to wait upon the Lord. You take the ones you can take. Little by little, pray three or four times every day. I wake up 5 a.m. every morning to pray for people. I don't pray for myself. When I wake up 5 a.m., I pray for 20 minutes, not for myself, but for others. My wife does the same thing. We don't pray together. She also does her own. Praying for people. You should do that. During the Daniel's fast, pray for others and pray for yourself. There is something you want the Lord to do for you. Within the first one week, you will notice it. That somehow, your prayers are being answered. You must do it. Put away your sins. Clean yourself up. Neat. And then you will see what God can do. Wherever you are and listening to me. If you don't do it. If you don't do it. It's not likely. You will make it. You must find time. To reconnect to Christ. If you don't find time, if you do not find time to reconnect to Christ, you will reconnect to Satan. Because nobody's neutral. I thank God that you have found time to be part of this program. We should have been having our natural remedies. Our natural remedies from 6.30 to 7 or so. But because of the flood, Elder Amukele, Samuel Amukele, was supposed to lead out. But at Edoa, where he stays, his headquarters, water had sucked the place and scattered his workers. Some of them are at Eleme, some are at Rumokoro. And that is why that aspect of our administration here is lacking. God will make it up for us. <clears throat> I want to thank God too for the leaders of the church that are always here. And for those who have been calling me from London, Great Britain, those who come from United States, and also from Madagascar, and for my students, especially 300 level students of Clifford University. They have been sending WhatsApp messages to me. And they have been following. Some of them also have fasted following the program. Abba, everywhere. Lagos, Lagos, everywhere. We thank God for the privilege. God has been merciful to all his children. Jesus is the same. Yesterday, today, and how? 
he has not changed what he did for people in the past he will do for you today yeah. it doesn't change all he's asking is that you give your heart to Christ be morally sound immediately you are morally sound every other thing will follow did you hear me very well immediately you conquer yourself morally which is very difficult very difficult immediately in the name of god in the name of jesus you conquer yourself morally every other thing in this life we follow you will make it but no matter how smart you are how good you are the things you are doing well but morally you are a pig a pig you are rotten you are going nowhere. Nothing, nothing will save you. Why? Because God, before you were born, God knew who you were. And God has given you all it will take at your own level to overcome immorality. You have it. You have it. The only thing is that you are playing it down. And when immorality enters your bone and your bone marrows, it's a problem. Then what Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 13 verse 23, can the Ethiopian change his skin? Can the leopard change his spots? Then those of you who have learned to do ego, do evil, Try and see if you can do good. So you can't. <clears throat> Marriage is the topic tonight. I know why I made this introduction. Marriage is a challenge. God instituted marriage in Eden. The man and the woman. And God blessed Adam. God was the, was the pastor. Angels from the choir. And God joined the man and the woman. It was God who did it. And Adam loved his wife. Even though his wife killed him. Did they hear me very well? His wife killed him. There is no man on earth who is married that the wife will not give an apple. No man has ever escaped it. No matter how good your wife is, no matter how good the husband, your wives will always, once in a while, give you an apple to eat. It's unfortunate, but it's there. When you see a man, <coughs> 100 years old. I mean, we are married for 50 years. You have been married for 50 years. How? How did you make it? He said, it's been wonderful. My wife has been wonderful. My wife is a great wife. When I look at the man's face, I say, this man is a great man. <laughs> he said, my wife has been wonderful. Those of you who have been with your wives, for 30 years, 40 years, 25 years, may God bless you. Amen. The thing is not easy. Eh? The thing is inside the women's body and inside their bones. All right, men, you know what I mean. You are a great man. May God sustain you. Amen. But before we go into that, before we go into that, I want us to look at this man you see here. Ah? Huh? Have you seen him? What is his name? <coughs> Pardon? Ah, <coughs> Pastor Dave. 
Pastor Dave, who told you I was always Pastor Dave? Pastor Dave is just something I started. But before Pastor Dave, who was he? Uh, <coughs> bad boy. <coughs> I can't stand here and start telling you, you see, some of us were born angels since I was born. See, who told you? I was like you. So what God did for me and rescued me, he will do it for you. Amen. And he will rescue you too. Yeah. That's my prayer. You are my children. God saved me. The same God will save you. Yeah. When I was lecturing at uh, uh, those we used to call the school of basic studies. Ah. Uh, Ah, SBS. Now Captain Elichiamadi Polytechnics. I was there. Lecturing. Uncle Dave. Some of them will hear me this evening and shout because they know. Uncle Dave. I was there with my friends. Living in a two-bedroom flat. Now one evening, I walked across to my friend's house. Late Elder Uche. Both of us graduated together from Aswa. We have been friends for so many years. I was his uh, best man when he married his wife at my three. And I got to his house and I saw a beautiful lady in the house about this time. And Uche was, used to be like me too. He said, Dave, Dave, see her? See this one? She's not married. I said, this one is not married. I said, eh? Then I looked at her legs. I saw her. I said, this is beautiful. This one will not escape me. <laughs> and so I, quite that evening, we talked and talked about, I saw her with a small Bible. She was a Pentecostal girl. Pretty girl. I saw her, and I said, okay. So I went to my house and brought my car, Beetle. <laughs> Beetle car. In those days. <clears throat> and I said, all right, let me just, the night has gone, let me just take you back to your house. I wanted to know where she was staying. So I took her down to the place. And I noted the place very well. And then came back and invited her to attend our church. Say, come and worship with us. Follow your family friends and come to our church. She said, okay. She will. I didn't know she would keep her word. On the Sabbath day, I was the organist of my three church. <clears throat> I was the organist. Some of you have heard my stories many times. Even though you have not changed like me. You have heard my story. <laughs> so, I was the organist. And I was, I was playing the organ. I saw the family. And the girl following them, they walked in from the door there. Not the new church, the old church. I saw the girl. Simple and beautiful. So, wow. So this girl came. I played the organ the way I had never played the organ before. <laughs> I played the organ and I, I said, I hope she's watching. <laughs> she didn't even see me. <laughs> Foolish boy. That was it. I did that and uh, at the end of the service, I took her back home. And uh, as I invited her, to attend a crusade at my one church conducted by Pastor Kuma from Aswa, a Ghanaian. She followed the family and attended. And family, uh, finally she was baptized. And I said, wonderful. 
The train is coming closer, isn't it? It's becoming much easier. Then I invited her to my house. She won't come. I will invite her. She will not come. And I said, what does she think she is? This one. I will invite her. She will not come. I said, just visit me. She will not come. Until one day, she now told me in the church that she was going to say, I will come. I will come and visit you. You will come? I said, yeah. I went back and told my friends, told my friend, come. She is coming to this house. She's coming to visit me. Oh boy, she's coming. And I took time, I arranged the house very well. I changed the bright lights into blue lights. <laughs> and I went and bought stockfish and meat goat meat and cooked and did all that and balanced the whole place and then waited As I hope this girl will not disappoint me meanwhile I had told my friends in their flat that the girl will be coming and so those bad boys too were watching I waited I waited around one o'clock across the field I saw her but I was devastated Instead of this girl, see her here. <laughs> Instead of her coming alone, she came with Mrs. Uche. <laughs> Fidelia. Fidelia did that to me. Spoiled all my plans. all my plans ah i sat there my friends even were shouting Chai! old boy don't die <laughs> this woman does point business old boy ah, ah. and both of them came they entered my house and they said dave i said you're hey, welcome i managed to put up some miles but i was not myself so they came ate my food and they left i said can't go back can go but in all this God was guiding me I didn't know I would become a pastor I didn't know but finally I promised her June 15 1985 and I said I would like to marry you you are different from others if you do others they will run fast and jump into the bed these young girls that are watching me and listening. Few minutes, boom, you already jumped into the bed. After that, the man will throw you away. Throw you out of his house. You have been fooled so many times. Tonight, the foolishness will stop. Amen. That was it. She came. I'm not saying she's an angel. But she beat her body and brought it under subjection. And decided not to start coming to my house to just on her own i told her i'm interested went and saw her parents that year we went and finally that was the year before then after that i said no i will take a decision before i married her i said i will take a decision cried and wept October 18, 1985. Cried as a young man. I said, what kind of mess is this? I go to the church, I sing, I play organ, I do all that. Who am I? Why am I so bad like this? I teach people. I cried from morning till night on the floor. I locked the door. I said, Lord, let it never be said in my life that I committed adultery. From that October 18, 1985, this is October, from that time till this evening where I'm standing here, 
no other woman had come between me and my wife. I have not cheated on her. As young as we were. She was in her middle 20. I was in my early 30s. Took that decision. Not because I will become a pastor. No, I didn't know I would be a pastor. But I took that decision with tears. I had not even read Joel chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. Even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Rend your heart and not your garment. I had not read that, but I knew that it was not good. And I said, God, help me. Let it be never be said in my life from today that I committed adultery or cheated on my wife. And Jesus has answered that prayer. Yeah. The man that is standing here before you, no woman, unless those who saw me in their dreams. That one I can't control. All right? They had been telling me, they tell me. One even told me, after a program, they told me, they said, uh, I mentioned her name, and I recollected her. He said, uh, on the telephone, he said, ah, I'm not happy. And I said, why? What is it? I'm not happy. I said, not happy. You made love to me last night in a dream. I'm not happy. And I said, that's not Pastor Dave. That's the devil putting up my face. Next time, rebuke that Pastor Dave in the name of God. She was disappointed. You can see how evil people were. She was disappointed. They said so many things. Things. If you take the decision I took tonight, God will rescue you. Amen. The way he rescued me. He will rescue you. That's why I'm not telling you that this man was an angel. I know how you feel. Because I feel it. The temptations, the trials, bad happy that right inside the bones. There. But God has given us what it takes to control ourselves. If your morals are not sound, wherever you are, listen to me. No matter how you preach, you won't go far. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 27, where Paul says, I beat, I beat my body and I bring it under subjection. If you don't beat your body, you will not control it. It will control you. He said, I do it so that after I have preached, Paul says, I will not be a castaway. You will not be cast out. That is what I wish everybody here tonight. Be strong. And all of you who are listening to me online, you know what I'm saying. Some of you here are dead. Some of you are rotten. Ellen White says we should cause him by what? His right what? His right name. You know there's no need playing it down. Some of you are already dead and sin. But tonight, Jesus will heal you. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, ah, listen to me. Marriage. Marriage is not easy. When we bring people's hands and join them and we'll say, will you take this woman to be your wedded wife? To live with her after God's ordinance in the holy estate of matrimony. Will you love her? Comfort her? Cherish her? In sickness and in health? In prosperity and in adversity? And forsaking all other men? Or all other women keep yourself to her as long as both of you shall live some say yes i do fantastic we normally say for better or for worse it is a joyous moment it is a great moment being a great moment will not remove you from temptation 
when you want to marry, when you want to marry, you want to look for a wife, you want to look for a husband. Marry a beautiful woman. Marry a handsome man. Not manage. Did you hear me? Don't do what? Don't say no. I, 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 I will marry somebody from the heart. Not beauty. Not the heart. It won't work. Marry a beautiful woman. Leave the ugly ones. Leave the ugly ones. Uh, I remember some people asked me, who then will marry the ugly ones? Let the ugly ones marry the ugly ones. Oh, yes. Having said that, I know that no child of God is ugly. Beauty is in the eye of the heart. One of my friends, he said, Dave, you see these short ones when I see them like this. See, fat and short. He said, Dave, I sweat. They're fantastic. And I said, these short ones are fantastic. He said, yes. Others will say, these tall ones. See them tall, broad shoulders. You, and you, you like the tall ones. Ah. Others like the fat ones. God is wonderful. When you marry tall ones, it's very easy to pluck the oranges. Do you hear me? Those who marry short ones, very easy for them to pick the gold on the ground. So you, cannot, you can never be a winner. Those who have short ones, they have things they do well. Those who have tall ones, they have things they do well. All God's children are beautiful. After wedding, I keep telling my people, after you have wedded, and you come with your wife back, to the house. My wife, when we got married, I, I used to carry her up. I used to carry her, hold her, carry her up. When we wedded, 1985. When you marry a girl, both of you are living together, make sure your relations don't disturb you. Some of them will come and occupy your house. They wouldn't even want you to talk to your wife. Before you know it, they are fighting her. The Bible says, Genesis chapter 2, Therefore shall the man do what? Leave his father and his mother and be cemented to the wife. Join to the wife. All of you have married, make sure your wife, at least for the first one or two years, stays alone in the house when you go to work. Make sure that happens. Make sure the house is not filled up with your relations and all that. You will miss the joy. Let her wait for you because when she didn't see you, she doesn't see you for some few hours and all that. She'll be longing for you to come home. Come home. Come home. So before you know it, and then wife, new wife, Young wife, make sure you know the time he will come back around 4 or 5 p.m. Go and take your bath again. Don't be smelling with the walk in the kitchen like that, okay? Keep yourself clean and neat. And wait, put some powder here. Dress well, neat, with smiles. So that by the time he knocks and you open the door and he sees you, he will throw the briefcase away. 
and bring carry the wife in his two hands instead of the briefcase carry you his hand you are the wife of his youth that's what it's supposed to be and that's how god has made it don't allow your sister-in-law to be the one to open the door or the brother where is the wife maybe somewhere in the room that's a bad start carry the wife your wife and carry, up, carry your wife that's the wife of your youth make sure in that house there is nobody there who is listening nobody in that house is listening and recording anything their house is your own if your wife is fat praise god <laughs> if your wife is bigger than yourself i don't know to praise god that's your choice and i thank god for you <clears throat> if you can't lift her up make a try If you try and you can't, both of you can fall on the floor. That is still love. Fall on the floor and have some experience. I was supposed to be Sir the War, a British man, made a statement, and I will quote what he said. I love that, that expression of love. Sir the War said, Love is an ocean of emotions entirely surrounded by expenses did he hear me very well said said love is an ocean of emotions entirely surrounded by what expenses love is expensive and so we shall go to first corinthians chapter 13 verses 1 to 4. Let us see what Paul says about love in marriage. So that those of you who are having problems today in your marriage, let's read this again. Can we read verse 1? Verse 2. Three. Four. Verse five. It keeps what? No history of wrongs. How do you like that? 20 years ago in this marriage, you, you did this to me. Five years ago, you did this to me. A month ago, you did this to me. I said, love does not keep a record of what? In marriage, we do not keep records of wrongs. Because there are people who are married here now and listening to me. Some women came to this program wherever they are. Some women, without their husbands, they are not talking to each other. But they are in the church. Wherever you are, go back home with your husband. Change. It shall be well with you. Amen. Whatever your husband has done to you, forgive. Let it go. Love is not rude. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. Because wrongs will always come. Did you hear me? They will come. I used to tell a story. And I repeat it here. Sometimes when I wear, husband and wife, they will quarrel. Some people say misunderstanding. Don't worry about that misunderstanding. I've quarreled with my wife many times. 
Nobody has ever come to settle us for 37 years. We quarrel. We let it go. God settles us. May God settle your marriage too. Amen. Settles us. I've not slapped my wife once for the past 37 years. I've not slapped her. But sometimes you say, but hey, you don't slap me, but you slap me with your mouth. You beat me with your mouth. I said, praise God. Whenever I shout at her, I'm not shouting at her. I'm shouting at Satan. Not at her. But as for her, no, 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 I can't shout at her. But for Satan, I shout at Satan. Not my wife. But then, we contain it. The wife has a way of handling the husband. The husband also has a way of handling the wife. Pains, disorganization. Some of you here, pastors, elders. Some of you even here are in pains because of your homes. Tonight, may God heal you. May God heal your homes. The wahala is too much. They didn't know the end. Isn't it? Because Satan is not yet dead. That's why they didn't know the end. But in Christ, you will survive. I used to tell my people, when you get newly married, please, please, these young people who are here, yeah, very soon I'll get my baby. You'll get your baby. When you get your baby, before you do, check your bedroom. Don't go for three bedroom flat. You can go for two bedroom flat. Start small. And when you want to buy your bed, buy a small bed. Don't buy a king size bed. You will kill yourself. Don't buy king king size bed. Some people will buy seven by seven and throw it there. Football field inside the bedroom. Young people, these people are not normal. What are you doing with seven? I can't understand it. Go for even three, 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 six or four. Small one. Why? Because there will be fire on the mountain. There will be fire on the mountain. When you quarrel, this woman will go to the sitting room. She will not come up because she doesn't want to come and stay close to a sinner. Huh? She will not come to the sinner to come and stay with the sinner. She will, she will go and stay in the sitting room. Don't worry about her. Don't touch her. Mosquitoes will do the work. Before midnight, she will sneak in to save herself. From the bites of the blessed mosquitoes. <laughs> mosquitoes, we urge her to go, go and join your husband. And when she comes, she will gently enter that football field bed. She will lie on the edge of the wood or, or eye on the other side and face east. You too, you will lie on this edge and face west. And then Satan will stay where? <laughs> Reminding her, you see, are you not dead? They warned you not to marry this, this man. This man is bad. His lifestyle. Look at his father, the mother. The father almost killed the mother. And now he wants to kill you. Say down we bring beam light and beam light and beam light. And the tears will be coming down her throughout the night. She's not sleeping. And then the man will say, Ah, I should have married Julie. <laughs> Julie, my darling. I was a happy man with Julie. See what has happened to me. How did I get into this kind of mess? Say and he says, It's true. Why don't you do something? Let her go so you can bring in Julie. 
Don't do that to yourself. Make the bed small. Four feet, they are in the market. Or, or, or four feet, six, they are there in the market. Or you go and cut the foam yourself. <laughs> go and cut the foam yourself. All right? So that when you quarrel and she comes in the night and she faces east and you face west because the bed is not, not wide, at least your backs will be touching each other. <laughs> And that's the beginning of reconciliation. Your yeah, bars will be touching each other like that. Past midnight, she will be far asleep before you know it. Her hand already on you. Your own on her. And the, 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 the corny man will be smiling. Mm, hey, see, are you not coming now? <laughs> Men are something else, isn't it? I said, see, you see now? See now? See now, not touching me now? <clears throat> All right. Before you know it, you can now press her hand again. Uh, sweetie, sweetie. Oh, she will not remember that both of you were quarreling. Say, don't, don't, don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. <laughs> I say, oh, no, I am not touching you. I only want to say that I am sorry for what happened in the afternoon. You see, you could not communicate. In the football field, you will not be able to do that. May the Lord help us. Get your wife. There are little things you do to make the home to function. Some of you already have suffered from the effect of what I'm saying here. And those who are listening online, some already suffering from it. Some are now not likely talking with their husbands and their wives. They can't talk. They can't talk because of anger. The husband did this. My wife did this. Wherever you are, let the thing go. Wherever you are, you are listening to me, let it go. Man, have a big heart. Don't keep records of wrongs. Love is expensive. Love is not banana. Love is not apple. Love is a challenge. In this world, love is bitter. Love is bitter. Don't mind the young people. The other day I told you, the young people who say <clears throat> they love their kissing. I see a secondary school boy. Secondary school. <laughs> University. 18 years, 19 years. See them on campus. See them like that. Holding guest hands. See them. My, my baby. <laughs> Look at them having a baby. Say they're, they're going to read together. That's my baby. My fiancé. 20 years old. God, let's see, fiancé. Where are they going to? Say, my baby. See her? So they use, they use the, the, the language, wrapping the baby up. To wrap her up. Uh, telling the baby, man, I love you so much, baby. I'm stressed into you so much. Listen, I don't sleep because I think about you. I failed my semester exam last, last year because of you. I was thinking about you so much. The love, the love I have for you is so great. A boy will say that. That boy is a devil. You fail the exam because of the girl. And the girl will believe. Especially when the lie is what? No, no, no. I told you the other day. When the lie is what? Fantastic. fantastic. <laughs> Whenever the lies are fantastic, girls, most girls will go for such lies. You call it very colorful. Unfortunately, many of them have suffered because of that. Be very careful. You select your wife. Marry your wife. God will guide you what to do. You see Pastor Dave here? When I wear suits like this, even at this age, I'm wearing the suit for you. In my house, I don't wear a suit to stay in my family. I go on shorts. I join my wife in the kitchen. She does the cooking. I do the washing of dishes. Till tomorrow. 
Did you hear me very well? For the past 37 years. My wife, she's not my slave. She's my helper. Why do you turn the woman into a slave? What we we'll do the cooking, even when coals and kata coming out of her eyes and that, she has to prepare her food. Why don't you allow the woman to have a rest? All right? Have a rest. How will she submit to you? In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 12 to 17, verses 22. To 28. Is it 22 to 28 of if Ephesians chapter 5? Let's see what Paul says. Wives, do what? 23. For the husband is what? As Christ is what? His body, of which is the Savior. 24. Now, as the church submits to the kind, to, so also wives should submit to their husbands. In what? Everything. Husbands do what? Just as? And give himself? 26. To make her holy. Cleansing her by the washing with water through the word. 27. And to present her to himself as a radiant church without sin or wrinkle or any blemish, but holy and blameless. 28. Same way. Husbands ought to love their wives as their own what? He who loves his wife does what? This text doesn't say wives should love their husbands. No. Bible does not say that women, wives, should love their husbands. Say so they should do what? Men should love their wives. But the husband should do what? Wives should do what? You don't love me. You don't love me. Tomorrow tell him. Bible says I should submit myself to you. Bible doesn't say I should love you. When you love me, I will respond to your love in everything by submitting myself to you to an extent is even more qualitative than the law i will be obedient to you i will serve you i will respond to your law doing whatever you ask me to do assisting you helping you is there any love more than that that's what we do when we say we love jesus that's exactly what we are doing we submit to Christ. We can't love him. We don't have what it takes to love God. Because Isaiah says, our righteousness is like what? Feed yeah. So we don't have what it takes to love God. But we have what it takes to be submissive. To submit ourselves to God by obeying what God has asked us to do, following His words. So, God, His name is lifted up. That's how we show God that we love Him by obeying what He asks us to do. The way a woman will show that she loves her husband is by being responsible, responding to whatever the loving husband asks her to do. That's why the scriptures put it that way. Women should be submissive to their husbands. And husbands should do what? Love their wives. And take care of them. <clears throat> In all things, be submissive to your husband. Help your husband. Husbands, help your wives. Follow them to cook. Follow your wives to cook. My wife is my girlfriend. For the past 37 years, both of us have worked together. I am her boyfriend. We stand together in the kitchen. We stand together and go to places. We've been traveling around places in Africa, overseas. 
got together when I was invited to come to Houston, Texas, for a program. <coughs> DK will understand what I'm saying because he knows. I was called to come. I said, Pastor Dave, we want you to come to follow to do the Houston for Christ series to handle one of the centers for us. I said, wonderful. The first thing I said is, what about my wife? They said they will get back to me. When we got to the U.S., the first elder told me, immediately we called you, and you said, what about your, your wife? They said, this man is the right man. He wouldn't like to leave the wife behind. He said, this man, Pastor Dave, is the right man. And I went with her. We spent about five weeks in Houston doing end-time lectures like this. Houston. I went with her. She played her major part. I played her role very well. That is what it's supposed to be. Work with your wives. Help your wives. Assist them. They are not slaves, like I earlier said. They are your helpmate. And all those of you who are not yet married, God will give you the appropriate spouse to marry. <clears throat> this evening we will pray for you. And God will give you, wherever you are online, this evening we will pray for you. God will give you the right person to marry. And after you are married, okay, I will tell the story of the sheep and of God. And good. Let me tell that story. Some of you know it, some of you don't. The sheep and goat. Sheep, goat, coming from the opposite direction and met on the mountain top. Small road remaining on the mountain top. This side, valley almost one mile deep. This side, one mile deep. There's no way they will be able to cross. No place. The goat looked at the sheep. And the sheep looked at the goat. The goat said, you go back. The sheep said, you go back. And so the goat, okay, the sheep said, all right, goat, see what we will do. Let me lie on the ground. Then you can walk on top of me and cross so that we don't die. If we meet here next time, then, goat, you also lie. Then I will walk on top of your path. Goat said, fantastic. That's wise. Now you are talking. And say they survived. Unfortunately, after some time, they met there again. So, ah, good. And she it's all right. And then God said, she said, okay, now it is your turn. Said, Me, my turn. <laughs> Me, my turn. I don't think they have said, Who told you that good will lie down? And you sheep. Huh? You sheep will walk on me. Oh, no, no, no. Let's fight. Let me teach you a lesson, sheep. And then the sheep looked at the goat. Said, no problem. And the sheep lay again on the ground. And the goat, <clears throat> the stupid. Of the two, who is wiser? Ah. Are you sure? Yes. Which of them is wiser? Will you become a sheep tonight? Allow your wife to walk on you like that? Every time you quarrel, your wife is always right and you are always wrong. Some men, some men have experienced that. Some women have also experienced that every time they quarrel, the husband is always right and the wife is always what? And if their husband decides not to be wrong, what happens? War. 
the house will scatter. So can you be a sheep tonight? And unfortunately, almost 90 to 95 percent of the homes in the world, what you have is what? Sheep and what? Goat. We hardly have two sheep. But there are those who are sheep, both of them. The woman is sheep. The man is sheep. We have many that are the man is goat and the woman is goat. Check the house and see. They don't last long. Six months in the marriage. They said this marriage is useless. I can't marry this man. This marriage is, is, is useless marriage. The man is useless. I can't survive this man. This man is terrible. I can't. The, woman, the, the, the man will be saying, this woman, this woman, Jezebel. Nobody, nobody on earth, pastor, nobody on earth can live with this Jezebel. Pastor, <laughs> I'm done. Nothing on earth will make me come close to her. Where you have goat, goat, but you have sheep and goat, you see the man saying, no problem. Pastor, I promise I'll marry her. I will stay with her. You see the woman saying, she, he's my husband. I will manage. I will stay. Take care of my children. I will stay in that home. May the Lord give you the grace. Amen. Those of you who are listening on the line, may God give you the grace. <clears throat> and make you strong. Especially some... Your wife will be calling you, hey, on we, <coughs> oh, and on we, those nice name, abbreviate your name, on we will cook your food, on we, on we. <laughs> Suddenly, when the quarrel comes, she will prepare the food. After preparing the food, she will just put the food there. She won't even tell you the food is cooked. Maybe she's going out and see you. You are there. You said, Oh, my baby, won't you go and eat your food? <laughs> no more what? Oh, we. No, 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 no. Oh, my baby. Your food is ready. No more. Oh, we. That's it. That does not make her a sinner. All right? No. Because the next two or three days, what happens? So they are holding the hand of man. They are talking again. Oh, we. Jane, how are you? It is over. That's what we see in a home. We are either the man is the sheep and the woman the goat, or the man is the goat and the woman the sheep. One tends to tolerate the other. One is always at the receiving point. Ah. <laughs> One is always at the same And because of the spirituality of that one, that is always at the, the receiving point, the wife may survive. Through, through him, the wife will be saved. We we'll package the home together. May the Lord grant us the grace Amen. to live for him and him alone in this work of marriage. God grant you the grace. It's a battle. Those who are preparing to enter the kingdom, we will go through all this, but the Lord will grant you the grace. Some of you are planning to marry, are looking for their own husbands and their own wives. May God not give you goats. God give you sheep. If you are there this evening, can you come to the front? My wife will pray for you. She has been here with me for 37 years and she knows what I'm saying. I will invite her please to come. I call her my sissy. Calabari, that's my sister. Okay, I call her my sissy. When I married her, I changed her name to Ruth. No, I added to her name Ruth. She is a daughter by name. And she has been by my side for 37 years, we are no longer as young as we used to be. All right? Is she beautiful? Yes. You are saying yes. 
you you go and marry your own too and may God give you also a beautiful spouse Amen. Amen. 37 years in marriage you see what she looks like will you imagine what she looks like 37 years ago or what I looked like 37 years ago she told me she couldn't sleep when I told her that uh, I love you I would like to marry you she, she said she couldn't believe it she couldn't sleep she she was dreaming of me <laughs> sorry <laughs> and i was also dreaming of her today we are here and i said we are happy together dorcas is our first daughter we also have a boy and another girl deborah three of them may god also bless your homes I, I am, I am Dave. She is Dabota D. Our son is Desmond D. Our first daughter is Dorcas D. Our last born is Deborah D. This family. I will invite all those who, by God's grace would like to have a happy home like my own and a successful home god has blessed can i see you come here young people can i can you come out here and wherever you are at the center come and then the married couples that are here can follow them at the back married couples should come at the back Let us pray for you tonight. <clears throat> so that the Lord will take care of you. <clears throat> we waited at my three church. December 22, 1985. And we waited. And I thank God for it. God will also bless your own marriage and help you. Young people, God will make you good and strong. Make choice. You will all look beautiful. Of you look beautiful. You look handsome. Don't make a mistake. I didn't make a mistake. Did I make any mistake? I selected a beautiful girl. That's what Uncle Dave will do. I like, I like the beautiful ones. Make sure their legs are straight. Marry them. Beautiful girls. Marry handsome men. Tall or short. The one you like. Alright? Marry them. And when you marry, seal it up. The way God helped me to seal it up. See this man standing here, I told you. 37 years now born between me and Christ before I joined the ministry I wasn't planning to be a pastor but I stood beside her I didn't tell her I'm not bonded to her I'm bonded to Christ the fear of God is what when you fear God and you honor God you will take care of your wife alright my sister Pray for these young people and bless them tonight. And pray, pray for the married ones that are here and that are out there. Young people, by now they are in the screens all over the world listening. Some of them are in turmoil. Some are crying even this night, weeping now, eyes, because of what's going on in their home. They're scattered. They want their homes healed. Jesus will heal their homes. Play your part well, and it shall go well with you. Beautiful children of God, I thank you so much for supporting this program and supporting your pastor. Uh, I was uh, a student of end time lectures for the past years. Thank you for being a student, and you will never be disappointed. I've I have tried God, I have tried him. I have uh, made my 
my investigations, I've made my comparisons, and I found out that the truth is here in Seventh day Adventist Church. And I wrote a book named The Truth Shall Set You Free. And it's in circulation. The first 1,000 copies has been exhausted. This program has also printed another 1,000 copies that is in circulation. If you read it, you will get to understand why I left my former church and I'm here identified with this great church. So don't be afraid, you will not be disappointed. Yes. Our loving, great, mighty, wholesome God, loving and compassionate Father, thank you, O oh Lord, our God, our creator, our redeemer, our sustainer, and our coming king. To you, O oh Lord, belong all the glory, honor, majesty, and adoration, and praises that you have first loved us, made us in your own image and likeness, and you have brought us together around the globe to hear this marvelous message of yours through your mouth, servant. Father, we thank you for keeping him alive to this moment. Thank you for healing him. Thank you for giving him the strength, the courage, and the utterances to deliver your word to your people. Father, we have committed great and grievous sins of different kinds at different places against the Trinity, even against our guiding angels, against others known and unknown to us, even against our very self. And Father, we plead with you earnestly and passionately to have mercy on us. Forgive and pardon us our great and grievous sins. And Father, restate us to our rightful minds and help us to know you, love you, serve you, and humanity better all the remaining days of our lives. Help us to serve you wholeheartedly. Father, help us. All the areas we have gone astray in our marriage vows, Father, forgive us and help us to start anew, start afresh. And Father, please give us the needed wisdom, knowledge, and understanding about marriage that will be so sweet, so enduring, so pleasant, that will endure till the end of the age. When the temptation temptations and the trials, tribulations comes, Father, give us victory over them Amen. and make us stand firm in our faith. And Father, may we make it to the kingdom you are preparing for us. Grant journey message to all and sundry that are gathered in different places and see us through the remaining days of this marvelous program that at the end, souls will be baptized to your glory. Amen. And your church will rejoice Amen. here on earth. And the angels in heaven will also rejoice for the souls that will identify themselves with this church, remnant church, and with the kingdom of heaven. May this and many other blessings be our experience in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, in conclusion, I present all your children before you. Wherever they are in the world, said the man cannot live alone. What he said, it is not good. Man and woman should become husband and wife. Help this young one here to get the right husbands, Amen. the right wives, Amen. so they can prepare for the second coming. And that those of them that are already married, Father, please heal their homes. Amen. Make their homes strong. Amen. Tonight, as they go back, 
may the husbands and wives hold their hands together <laughs> thank you for answered prayers thank you dear jesus may the lord bless you and keep you may the lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you may the lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forevermore Amen. Oh God, our help Have a good night. Okay, quickly we want to invite our friends to come forward and we also want to uh, remind you of the promise we made if you have been able to